Hello, this is Scott Manley here and I finally got a microphone working. Um, unfortunately, my uh, $200 microphone and preamp um, is still having issues connecting to my new sound card, so I have resorted to my old rock band microphone, which uh, I hope you think doesn't sound too terrible, but it doesn't sound as good as what we had. Anyway, um, with 0.16, we've basically got all these new um, larger parts, and they're designed for the three-man capsule. And between all the other EVA stuff, I hadn't really got around to actually trying to build a space capsule for the moon. Uh, obviously, so I took one to the orbit of Minmus, but that's a little easier. And then, of course, we've realized that there's this fuel flow problem. So unless you're burning your fuel at 100%, you've got no guarantee that it's going to work in future versions. So, you know, to make this thing land, we're going to put a parachute on it and put a 3 meter decoupler. And you want you know, basically a descent stage, a fuel tank that will get you onto the surface. And then you need to land. You need some legs. Let's do four. And then to actually get to the surface, you need some ladders. So these are the ladders that you nail to the side of your ship. And then we have another ladder that we extend to the ground once we get to the bottom. And these are very important because otherwise when you get out, it's a one-way trip. Yeah, let's, uh, let's, oh, come on, there we go. Okay, so that is basic lander and, um, well, that will work. But one thing that you're going to need is uh, re RCS. And therein lies something of a problem because you want RCS on this stage and... The RCS tank is small, so you want it somewhere. You want to put this RCS cons uh, tank somewhere in here. Uh, it can't go on other stages because you need it in the final one. If we stick it here, then there's this little annoying gap. And in theory, you know, actually when you test it, your Kerbals will climb across this gap uh, just fine. But let's face it, it looks stupid. Um, we can fly with that if we like. We can take this up and build... I did some test flights and you can land with that. Everything's fine there. Now, if we'll just step away from building this moon stage. One thing that has been suggested is that the new decouplers can actually fit stuff inside. But then you get weird issues like that. Um... I'm not sure that even is right. But actually, it does make a, a, a relative, a better looking ship somehow. It's a little more compact. But what happens when we try to launch this? Does it just explode? We'll find out when the physics engine kicks in. Come on. Physics for... Come on. There we go. Oh yeah, of course. The little engine is woefully underpowered and basically won't work. I, l I like how I can time warp now that I'm, even though I'm under thrust. That just seems like a bit of a weird bug. My, I I'm time warping, but my fuel. Okay, this is a bizarre bug. My fuel is going down at the usual rate, but time warp is running. So I'm somehow on rails with my engine firing. I wonder what happens when I actually lift off. Let's go to like... Whoa, wow! Oh my god. Um, I hope none of you guys suffer from epilepsy. I'll probably have to uh, put a sign on the front of this video. Oh my goodness. <laughs> you can see that there is another um, capsule here from a previous test. I think the pilots are still probably inside that. This is really kind of surreal. I wonder if this will ever lift off. Um, what? Maybe if I put the time warp back down to one. Nope. Okay, it's not the time warp that's holding it back. I just wonder what happens when the enough thrust builds up that I can't adjust the throttle. This is a new and interesting bug I have just discovered. I just wish that um, 
it would take it it would burn down a little faster. Will this thing even generate enough thrust to get me off the the pad? It's, uh, six hundred. theory, this should have, uh, like its thrust is 135. You can see its specific impulse is lower because we're at, at ground. In theory, as we gain altitude, it should go up. Let's go back to time to it. Oh, look, you see? It, I was nailed to the pad until time acceleration was over. Okay! So yeah, this thing will take, this thing will actually fly. But it feels wrong! Uh, let's um, get up and see if the, the decoupler works correctly. I wonder if we'll get high enough for the, uh, the parachute to really work in any real way. You can see that Bill is uh, watching this scientific experiment with great interest. I mean, let's face it, he's involved in the experiment and has a great interest in what happens. Okay. Well. It semi-worked. It would have been nice to leave the the RCS attached to the ship. Because, you know, having a bit of, of control over the capsule would be nice. There we go. Okay. okay, so that's a somewhat successful test. But I, I, I think it doesn't feel right because we're putting parts inside each other. Now, that is one solution. The other solution that I think I've come up with... Um, is instead you put the parachute here. Now you put the the reaction control module or tank up there, and then you you build you know the rest of your spacecraft like this. But if you then do the obvious thing and stick that on there, as soon as you drop to 500 meters and your parachute opens, that will tear off and you'll die. And while that's entertaining the first time it happens, it's uh, not really what we're here for. Let's try and be all scientific. Um, yeah, so what we want is a different type of parachute. We have the small parachute, and we can go Apollo style on this. We can spread these around the outside like this. <coughs> Pardon me. And, well, let's put the reaction control modules on so that we have an analog for our, our in-orbit design. And yeah, we'll throw this away temporarily. We'll just throw on a test rig to throw the capsule up and verify that the parachutes and everything work. There we go. And we've got to find ourselves little solid rocket boosters. The new solid rocket boosters are way better than they used to be. Like, it's like a revelation. It's finally no longer like an embarrassing thing to do or a, to <laughs> or something that you, you use for challenges. Solid rocket boosters genuinely provide a, a great, a great utility to the rocket faring gentleman's <laughs> toolbox. Look at this. Let's try and uh, make sure. Yeah, we're going up plenty, plenty high, plenty fast. One thing to note is the capsule has like almost no air resistance. So as soon as we detach, um the rocket will get pulled away from us. Even although we deploy our chutes, the rocket is getting slowed down faster by the atmosphere than we are with our chutes. But um, if we can accept, if we time accelerate down, and that will take a moment during which I could tell you about other more interesting things, except I can't think of any. Yeah, did you guys watch the Olympics last night? Um, yeah, I can't show you any pictures, of course, because the Olympic Committee would shut me down, but yeah, Daniel Craig and the Queen. Yeah, the the stunt double apparently was uh, Gary Connery, which uh, you might have heard of because he, he is almost an honorary Kerbal Space Program member. He's the guy that landed a... He jumped out a helicopter and managed to land without a parachute using only a wingsuit. Of course, uh, he landed on all those boxes, but if he'd missed, he could have just landed on his giant testicles because that man has balls. Also, I thought it was pretty awesome that they had Underworld doing the picking all the music and working with Evelyn Glenny, who is this percussionist who is, in fact, deaf, which is also pretty darn awesome. But yeah, look, 
This thing is going to land. It's decelerated to 8.3 meters per second. This, gentlemen, is the design of our final descent capsule. Now we just have to build the rest of the rocket that will get it to the moon and back. And that's in part two.